Welcome everybody to Lesotho Spide. Today we have a very special video. We are going to be doing a walk around an Antonov 26B. It is very rare that we get an opportunity to see an Antonov aircraft in Southern Africa, let alone here in Lesotho. This Antonov 26B is parked at Moshosha 1 International Airport. So without wasting any further time, come with me and let's take this tour. So she was manufactured on the 14th of November 1980 and as I mentioned she's currently parked here at Mushosha 1 International Airport. We're just going to start here on the starboard side of the aircraft or the right side and we're first going to focus on the top over here. What we have is the primary pitot tube and then coming down we have the secondary pitot tube. Now coming to the nose of the aircraft, this compartment over here is the <clears throat> electronics bay and to the right of the electronics bay we have an icing probe or icing uh, detector. Underneath the electronics bay looking just at the nose wheel and looking at the nose wheel well you can see a red marker painted. That red marker should be uh, in line with the tire so the tire itself uh, should have a red marker to uh, indicate that the wheel is aligned with the wheel well. Now coming back to the nose of the airplane located within the nose is the weather radar antenna. We are of course checking that the nose doesn't have any significant dents we, uh, we can see that there are some uh, dents and paint uh, scratches, but there's no significant um, dents. Um, coming to the starboard side, we pretty much have the same thing, which is an icing probe. This icing probe is for the captain. The one on the port side is for the uh, first officer. And this um, bay over here is the radio equipment uh, bay. Now you can see there's a little red box which is covering something special. This is actually the pitch sensor. It's a very sensitive uh, probe. So naturally it's something that needs to be closed. On the captain side, we do have the secondary um, pitot tube, which you can see actually has a de-icing element. And then at the top over here, uh, we have the primary um, Pito tube. On the top top of the aircraft is an antenna that is the VHF communications antenna and coming to the engine this particular engine as you can see uh, has four constant speed metal blades. The engine itself are two turboprop Ivchenko AI24s. So these are four constant speed metal blades. Uh, you will notice on the blades they have a de-icing uh, element and the propellers rotate clockwise. It is very important that these propellers are actually rotated clockwise and not anti-clockwise. The reason being is because there is a clutch. If you rotate the propellers anti-clockwise you're going to damage the clutch. So when you rotate it clockwise you will hear a clicking sound a t -t 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 -t. that clicking sound signifies that the clutch uh, is working okay now let us look behind the propeller we have the air intakes and underneath that we have the cowling so we make sure that the cowling is open and one has to ensure that there is no oil or fuel leakage um, underneath the engine. Uh, so underneath here, or what is located on, uh, just in this section over here, is actually the generator, um, which of course um, the latches should all be uh, secure. So you have latches on, a latch on this side and you have a latch on the other side. Perfect. Then we check the undercarriage. The undercarriage door has a marker. You can see a red marker. There. That red marker has to be in line uh, with the undercarriage itself. That is also very 
uh, important. Um, looking at the undercarriage, you have to ensure that there is no that there is no hydraulic fluid leaks, um, and again that the tire, of course, uh, is in a good state. Oh, look, a little bug. Interesting. Then checking the wing, we need to ensure that there is no leakage from uh, the fuel pumps and that there are no uh, significant wing um, dents. Uh, let's just walk to the tip um, of the wing. Uh, at the tip of the wing, you can see we have static wicks uh, to discharge any excess electricity as well as the um, navigation light. Now we can look at the flaps um, as well as the ailerons, the trim tabs on the ailerons and one has to check that there are no leakages of hydraulic fluid, uh, particularly of the cylinders. I myself am not sure where the cylinders are located but they are certainly there. Now we come to underneath the belly of the aircraft. Underneath the belly of the aircraft we have another antenna. This is the VOR ant antenna and we have the beacon light and then we have a um, extractor point for if you um, initiate the fire extinguisher. And we can now go to the rear of the airplane where we have uh, some ventral fins. Uh, and just coming to the rear of the airplane, this is, this is something very special. Uh, we have a cargo door uh, area. Now this particular cargo door, when it opens up, you can actually drive in not one, but two cars. Um, which is excellent. This particular Antonov 26B is a cargo variant. You can also carry passengers, but I think primarily it is used for cargo, as it should be. And you can take two cars and whatever form of cargo that you wish to take up to a payload of 5.5 tons. Now for the cargo door, when you do see it open and up, um, you will see it's actually quite thick and that is because the cabin itself uh, is pressurized. Now, if we're just quickly looking at the rudder or the vertical stabilizer, you can see uh, the beacon light is located just over there. And coming to the leading edge of the horizontal stabilizer, we actually have um, a heating element there or de-icing element there, uh, which is of course very useful. Now, on the horizontal stabilizer, we have static wicks as well located. And on the elevator, we have trim tabs um, as well. Rear navigation light, vertical trim uh, on the rudder itself. And there is the starboard side um, static wick. Now, looking back at the ventral fin there actually needs to be a little hatch located uh, just over here what that hatch is for i do not know if anyone knows please comment in the comment section below now we come to the right engine here we have something very special you will notice on this right nacelle it's open but on the port side it is actually closed now this particular device here is actually the APU, auxiliary power unit, but it is called the Tumansky RU-19, RU-19. It serves two purposes. One is an APU, but get this, unlike many Western manufactured aircraft, it serves as additional thrust in flight in case of engine failure. So this is actually quite an amazing feature to have. I have never seen this before on any uh, Western aircraft. So within the cockpit, you'll actually notice on the throttle quadrant, there are three levers instead of two. The third one is for the APU. Now on the right wing, everything is uh, pretty much the same. Um, 
we have the exhaust on the right engine um, same thing with the red markings um, which should be in line with the undercarriage generator underneath uh, we do have multiple emergency exits as you had noticed here on the right side as well as on the left side this one has particular has a door uh, left side I believe you have to cut open just as it mentions over here it says to cut open okay now we're actually going to take a tour a very quick tour inside uh, the cockpit um, with the instruments you will notice um, I actually didn't take a video of it but you will notice that um, or I will tell you now that this particular aircraft has two transponders so it has the original manufacturer transponder as well as a Bendix King um, transponder the small one, yeah? Yes. The short one? Yes. It is a lock for the acceleration of the thrust. You know, the thrust. Ah. When the temperature, outside temperature is, this is in Russia, actually, minus 20, minus 15, minus. You just click there, it's on the left side, the small indicator for the temperature, the outside temperature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, main engine and fuel? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. All right. Primary display. Not on the ground. No, if you go to Russia, or if you go to Russia, if you go to Russia, it can be minus 20, minus 40, minus 40. Minus, I mean. I hope you guys enjoyed this tour as much as I have. Thanks everyone for watching. If you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed giving you guys a tour, please subscribe to my channel and like this video. The more people like the video, the more will the YouTube algorithm expose it to those who will be very much so interested in seeing this plane. I'm really looking forward to growing our community on this channel and I'd like for you all to join me on this journey. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.